This is Jamie. Everybody, say hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. You just talked to a stick figure. <laughs> Jamie, he's a very busy guy. On any given day, he's doing a lot. He's got a job, he's got an internship, he's got classes, he's got a social life, he's got to eat, and of course, he's got a nap. He has so much going on that he has to make sure it is all organized. Otherwise, he's going to forget something. So he keeps it all organized within a to-do list. On his to-do list, he has a lot of things. On any given day, it ranges from anywhere from 10 to 30 things. Today, it's only 20. But he has a lot of which he procrastinates. He puts off over and over and over again. First, he wants to study for a test. He's been trying to study for this test for about a week now, but he always has an excuse why not to do it. And now, tomorrow is his test, so you bet your bosom that he is going to study today. He wants to work out. He's been trying to work out for two weeks now, and he's got excuses all the time. I'll do it tomorrow. No, I'll do it tomorrow. No, tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. And now it's two weeks later. He also wants to ask his crush out. He's been talking to her for two weeks now, every day for two weeks, and she's obviously into him, and all he has to do is ask, and she will say yes but he hasn't done it. And there's a bunch of other things on his list. Jamie is a perfectionist, and what that means is that everything he does, he has to do to the point where there are no flaws at all. And if there are flaws, then he dictates that as a failure. And the more flaws there are, sometimes he says he is a failure. By show of hands, who in here thinks that they are a perfectionist? Okay, that's about 50% of the room. But I want to argue that we are all perfectionists. In some way, shape, or form, we have some perfectionism in us. There are a lot of ways that it is in our lives. It's very acute that we don't even know we're there. But it takes away our own power to control our own destiny, to do what we need to do. In Jamie's case, he's been procrastinating this to-do list. So there are a lot of ways that it runs our lives, and I want to talk about three of them. First, it can make us overwhelmed. In Jamie's case, he's overwhelmed about this test he needs to study for. Last week, it was 15 pages of notes, and he wanted to know every single thing perfectly. Really, he wasn't able to do it because he started with this question, where do I start? He wanted to have the perfect first step, the perfect second step, perfect third step, and fourth step, and fifth step, but he just hasn't done it. So now, since his test is tomorrow, he's gonna do what I call taking imperfect action. In entrepreneurship, there is a phrase, we say it's better to launch and learn than to learn and launch. And what that means is that oftentimes startups put so much research into their products that by the time they launch it, their competitors already have a product on the market or their customers no longer even want it. So how does this relate to Jamie? Well, he's gonna launch, do something. Do not necessarily the perfect item on his list, but just do something. He's gonna really just open his books, sit down, and then he'll figure out from there. He's going to start with something and adjust his approach. The second way that perfectionism can run our lives is it makes us wait for the perfect circumstances. So with Jamie, he is worried about the working out. He's got so many excuses why not to do it. Excuses like, I don't have enough time, I'm tired, I just ate. And besides, the gym's probably packed anyway. So how do we get Jamie from this to that? That's the beginning. How do we, Jamie, from a scrawny little guy like that to Hulk-like? Well, simply, Jamie's got to stop waiting for perfect circumstances and be comfortable with good enough. Jamie, he wants to have the perfect workout. He wants to do it at the perfect time, with the perfect amount of time. He has to get six packs of abs by tomorrow, otherwise he has failed. At least that's what he tells himself. But if he's comfortable with good enough, he'll be more empowered to do it. If he only has 30 minutes rather than an hour, he'll still do a workout. If it's raining outside and he doesn't want to walk to the gym, he'll still do a bodyweight workout at home because it's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Everything does not have to align. The third way that perfectionism can run our lives is that we have overreaching goals, goals that most likely we cannot achieve. In Jamie's case, he has overreaching goals about asking his crush out. First off, let's, they're cute. They're super cute together, right? So like, I keep on telling them they're a power couple. At least they can be. But he just hasn't asked her out. And that's because he's so worried that this conversation might not go the way he plans. He has this perfect idea of what the, what the conversation is going to look like. It's going to look something like this. Do you want to go out? Yes, I've been waiting for you to ask me forever. Coffee? 
Of course. Okay, so what's your favorite cup of coffee? No, wait, wait. Let's say our favorite cup of coffee on a count of three. One, two, three. Starbucks! <laughs> okay, it, it's not gonna happen like that. The odds that this conversation is gonna end with them counting up to one, two, three, and yelling simultaneously, Starbucks, that's not gonna happen. There are a lot of ways that a conversation can be flawed. Jamie can forget what he's gonna say. He can stumble over his words. I've been doing that the entire time I've been up here. I've even been in conversations where I've accidentally spat on someone. So in Jamie's case, there's a lot of ways that can go wrong. But if he expects these imperfections, expects that it might not go the way it's planned, he'll be more empowered to do it. Just because she's not super enthusiastic, but she still wants to go out with him, does not mean it has failed. She might want to go on a walk in the park instead of getting coffee. That's okay. It's not planned, but it's still a success. Just because it is flawed does not mean we have failed. There are a lot of ways that perfectionism runs our lives. It takes away our power to control our own destiny. A lot of ways we don't even know we're there. It makes us overwhelmed. But we know we have to take imperfect action. We have to start with something, not necessarily the best approach, the best thing, but then adjust our approach from there. It makes us wait for the perfect circumstances. And we know that we have to stop waiting for perfect and be comfortable with good enough. And it makes us have overreaching goals, goals that most likely we cannot achieve. But just because something is flawed does not mean we have failed. There's so many ways that perfectionism runs our lives. It takes away our own power to control the outcomes of our lives. But all we have to do to correct this and take back that power is to be cognizant of these symptoms and most importantly, be willing to be imperfect. Thank you.